a piece of granite has a mass of 6,000 grams and a volume of 2,300 cubic centimeters. And we're told to calculate the density. Okay, that's pretty easy. Density is just mass divided by volume. And we're given both of those numbers. The mass is 6,000 grams and the volume is 2,300 cubic centimeters. So we just pull out the calculator and divide that. 6,000 divided by 2,300 comes out to 2.6 and you can see the units right there, grams per cubic centimeter. Then we're told to calculate the weight of the piece of granite. That's not too bad either if you remember the formula for weight. The weight of any object is the mass times g. And in this case, the mass is given. That's 6,000 grams. But in this formula, in this formula, m here is in kilograms. So 6,000 grams, that's 6 kilograms times g. And g is 9.8 meters per second squared. And then these units here, kilograms times meters per second squared, that will give us uh, a weight in newtons. So 6 times 9.8 is 58.8 newtons. So that's the weight. That's the downward force of gravity on this piece of granite. And then we're asked another question. Now it gets a little bit trickier. Question C. If it is placed in water, how much buoyant force would be produced by the displaced water? Okay, to answer this, you have to understand Archimedes' principle. Archimedes' principle says that any object floating or submerged, and this would be submerged, right? This is a chunk of rock. If you put it in water, it's going to be submerged underwater. It's going to sink. But it will still displace some water. And any object floating or submerged in the water is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the water it displaces. So we have to ask ourselves, how much water is displaced? And that question deals with the volume of the rock. It displaces 2,300 cubic centimeters of water because that's the volume of this block of granite. So 2,300 cubic centimeters of water. And remember that one cubic centimeter of water has a mass of one gram. So this is 2,300 grams of water is displaced. And that's pretty easy to write in kilograms. 2,300 grams is 2.3 kilograms. So that's the amount of water displaced. And again, Archimedes' principle says that any object in a liquid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the water it displaces. So we need to find the weight of this much water. So again, we use the formula for weight. It's m times g. But now we're calculating the weight of this much water. So that's 2.3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And multiply, and that comes out to 22.5. And again, that's in newtons. So that's the buoyant force provided by the water. So these two numbers, think about these two numbers together. Gravity is pulling down this hard. Okay, that's the weight. And then the water, the buoyant force of the water is pushing up with this much. Now the gravity wins in this case, right? The 58.8 downward force is bigger than the upward buoyant force. So it sinks. There's not enough upward buoyant force to overcome the force of gravity. But these two numbers together allow us to answer question D here. If it were submerged at the bottom of a lake, how much upward force would be required to lift it off the bottom? Well, if it weren't submerged, if it were just on land, this would be the upward force required to lift it. You would have to lift it with enough force to overcome the gravity. But if it's in the water, you have some buoyancy helping you. Now, not much. Rock is not particularly buoyant, right? Rock sinks. But you still have 22.5 newtons of upward buoyant force from the water displaced. So the amount that you need to lift with in order to lift it off the bottom is this much less than the weight. So the, the last question is a fairly simple calculation. 
we can just say 58.8 newtons minus 22.5 newtons and that comes out to 36.3 newtons if we apply 30 36.3 newtons of upward force along with the buoyant force from the displaced water that will be that will equal the 58.8 newtons of gravity and that will be enough force to lift it off the bottom